Hello everyone, Yoni Coleman from NCSY Canada, here to share some thoughts on Parshas Vayigash. So, I think in Parshas Vayigash we have two themes which really emerge. The first is the theme of Yehuda as the world's first Baal Shuva, and the second is the uh, theme of self-control. So, what happens? This week's Parsha starts off, and you have Yehuda beseeching, unbeknownst to him, to his brother Yosef, the Grand Viceroy of Egypt, beseeching, please take me as, this, as, as a slave instead of my brother Benjamin. So Rabbi Sachs point out, points out that Yehuda really is, uh, uh, he exemplifies this theme of tshuva. How so? What happened? We have two parshios ago. We have Yehuda, who is the one who suggested, you know, take Yosef and sell him off as a slave. We don't want him anymore. We don't need him. Uh, let's, let's sell him as a slave. And uh, what, what, what comes about through, through those chain of events is eventually uh, Yehuda ends up consorting with Tamar, his daughter-in-law. Rabbi Sachs points out that Yehuda underwent an empathetic transformation during his relationship with Tamar. You know, when it's discovered that he had consorted with her, he calls out Sad Kamimeni. She's much more righteous than me. This is a fundamental component of Teshuva, says Rabbi Sachs, when you can feel remorse, recognize the wrongdoing, and then ultimately come about and change. This manifests in Yehuda. So in this week's parasha, what do we have? We have a remarkably different Yehuda than the one who casts Yosef off into slavery. We have a new, sensitive, empathetic Yehuda who can feel for his brother, Binyamin, and says, please take me as a slave. Which brings us to Yosef. Imagine what must have been going through Yosef's mind. You have him uh, there in the whole courts full of Egyptian nobility and guards and the people with the funny headdresses and all that ancient Egypt stuff. And he's about to go for the big reveal to his brothers. You know, Yosef fascinates me. Here's someone who at the age of 17, a very young age, was placed in remarkably trying circumstances. He was in the uh, house of Potiphar, the Egyptian noble, and Potiphar's wife actually tried to uh, coerce Yosef to sin every single day. And we have this uh, this tremendous amount of self-control that Yosef displays, which uh, ultimately he, he does not sin. He does not sin with Potiphar's wife, and he shows that you're able to choose. You're always able to choose and use self-control. So you have this type of person who, in the face of depravity in a society that is devoid of, largely devoid of morality, sitting in this Egyptian court with all his brothers, he wants to reveal himself, and v'lo yacho, uh, Yosef, Yosef could not restrain himself, says the Pasek, and he is about to disclose his identity to his brothers, and he stops, and he dismisses everybody from the courtroom, and then he calls out, I'm Yosef! Is my father still alive? So what is the significance of the interplay between these two themes? Again, we have Yehuda, as Rabbi Sachs point out, points out, exemplifies self-control, and we have uh, 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 sorry, exemplifies Teshuva, and we have Yosef who exemplifies self-control. I like to suggest that this is, uh, these themes are linked to the idea uh, behind Mashiach. So what are we taught about Mashiach? This is where it gets interesting. So Mashiach comes about, the rabbis teach us, through two people. The first is a descendant of the house of Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef. So what does Mashiach ben Yosef do? What is, his, what is his job? His job is to prepare the world for the coming of Mashiach ben David. Who is Mashiach ben David? Mashiach ben David is from the tribe of Yehuda, somebody who exemplifies teshuva. So when you have the, uh, the theme as, as taught to us by Yosef, which is, you know, use that Salam Elohim. You know, we're, we're taught that what is, what is Salam Elohim? Salam Elohim, being created in the image of God, is the ability to says Rabbi Kaplan, is, is, is the ability to use your one's free will. Free will is what drives self-control. So uh, being in a world, you know, Mashiach ben Yosef comes and prepares the world. This is the theme of using our free will to choose good. This is what prepares the world. And then comes Mashiach ben David, the idea from the, who was from the house of Yehuda, where the idea of teshuva, of starting fresh, having a clean slate, being able to empathize. This is really what the final adaption is about, a perfect world. When we all merit to receive the goodness of a Kaddish Baruch Hu and to strive in ways which emulate his Sadiqim, and to all those out there, have a wonderful, wonderful Shabbos. Thanks so much for listening.